Out on an island in the pristine waters of the Pacific Northwest sits a $30 million sea farm. Not just an ordinary sea farm challenging the environment, one that actually gives back. One of the things that's always been extremely important to my dad has been the environment. What's incredible about, uh, about this process is that we bring in a small, a very small amount of seawater into the facility to recreate the spring bloom on land. And in order to get the amount of microalgae that we're growing on land, we would have to bring in uh, a massive amount and deplete the ocean of a, of a very, very viable food source, whereas the water that's leaving our facility actually contains more phytoplankton that is going directly back out into the ocean than what was originally brought in. And he is providing even a larger source of that back to Mother Nature, and that's, that's beautiful. In the age of World Wide Web, cloning and moonwalkers, now we can naturally grow and harvest phytoplankton. I built on this site a large shellfish hatchery, one of the largest in the world. And in order to proceed with producing the amount of seed that we require, I got into the business of growing algae. I did come up with a method that I could grow any quantity, any amount at any time of these algae outdoors as well as indoors. His process that he's developed is unique. Uh, the big difficulty is how do you harvest something? These, these single-celled photosynthetic organisms are like the tiny little one-celled plants floating around in the water. I mean, how do you get them out of the water and into, into your product? And he's developed a process where it's a very quick and easy way of extracting all the nutrients from these cells. Phyto, meaning light, plankton, meaning floating or suspended, is the base of life source as we know it. According to NASA, it is responsible for up to 90% of oxygen in our atmosphere. With thousands of single-cell microscopic plants in the ocean, it has eluded man until now. You know, I'm just grateful that I was chosen to find this product because it's been very elusive. It's eluded man until now, and here we have it. And um, I'm going to help as many people as we can, I hope. Throughout history, necessity continues to be the mother of all invention. He was creating the phytoplankton uh, to feed a shellfish. And as the business grew, his health started to deteriorate. And I used to think that he was just maybe overworked or, you know, tired and he ended up getting diagnosed with some pretty serious illness about a year ago. They had diagnosed me with a, quite a serious cancer. In fact, a very serious cancer. It's called mesothelioma. And there's only about 2,000 cases a year in North America. Nobody survives. With just nine weeks to a few months to live, Mr. Harper did the unimaginable. I was not expecting what I heard. They basically uh, gave him nine weeks to nine months to live. Well, it was a pretty big blow, so trying to get my affairs in order, which had to be done. We then, um, you know, just basically settled down to, for me to start slowly, you know, dying. I had to go down and pick out his grave plot, and that was a really, um, just a very horrible, raw, vulnerable time. While all this was happening, getting ready for his surgery, we had all been giving him a bit of a hard time because he had been eating phytoplankton out of the tanks at work. And I was actually getting pretty upset with him about doing that because it's for whales, it's for oysters, it's for fish, it's for krill. So I said, are you crazy? You know, he's literally sticking his finger in the tanks and, and eating this stuff raw. I started on a daily routine of just taking a bit of paste putting it in my mouth and wash it down with a drink of water and go about my daily business, what I could do. And within about 10 to 15 days, here I am starting to less pain in my back. I knew that something was going on, so I just kept eating half a teaspoon of this paste a day. I was booked to go for a surgery in Victoria where they were going to do what they call a talc treatment. And they take a medical grade talcing powder, they introduce it into your between your lungs and your pleural lining and uh, keep you in the hospital for a few days. And that there uh, causes your lungs to fuse together and it stops you from drowning in your own fluids that are built up. The head surgeon came out and had a very uh, 
odd look on his face. I said to my mom, oh, oh my God, something's happened. Uh, my dad's died. Um, and I was just shaking and panicking. And, and the surgeon came up to me and he said, you know, I don't know what's going on here, uh, but there's a strange foreign white substance covering uh, your dad's tumors in his lungs. And we've never seen anything like it before. Well, lo and behold, they went in there to have a look saw something they never seen before, took 11 sites, sent them away for biopsy, and I got the news back, there was no, everything was benign, they were, just did not know what to make of it, everything was absolutely clean. Well, the surgeons are saying that they don't know what I had, they don't know if what I created and I'm taking had any effect on the cancer, all they can tell me is they've never seen what they saw inside of me, and I attribute this to my algae. I fully believe that with all my heart. I, you know, I, I do moderate exercise every day. I watch what I eat. I, you know, lead a very normal life. And then as a bonus, I've lost weight more than, and I've tried dieting all my life because I'm a diabetic or I was a diabetic. If it's a coincidence or not, I don't know. But anyway, my blood sugar started dropping, my weight started falling off, and I ended up by probably within about a six month period, here I am no longer requiring insulin, and I was taking 88 units a day of insulin, and I now can I can eat just about what I want in moderation and I have no elevated sugar levels and I feel fabulous.